Hello everybody, just thought I'd come back and do another collection update, it's, I think it's been two months since I did the last one, so I've got quite a lot of films in that time, uh, obviously bought some as they've been released, uh, Arrows basically had a sale on in H&B and on their website, so usually when the Arrow sale comes around, I think it's usually in April and then in October, I don't have much money to sort of capitalise upon it, so this time I've saved up some money ready um some in there i don't think i yeah i've sort of got one i'll just quickly show you like this kind in like a standard i guess you call it a jewel case but basically that normal price from arrow in hmv and that you're looking at about 18 pounds which unless it's a new release i don't ever want to pay that so when they have to sell on those ones go down to like nine pound big boxes go from say 50 down to like 20 25 um limited edition ones go from say usually like 30 down to about 15 or 20 so basically half price on most stuff then these kinds of collectors ones with the slip case go down to about 10 which from 19 or so is pretty good value so yeah i tried to get a lot of it whilst it was um all on in the arrow sale i'll talk for them as i go through but i'll try not to take too long like the last one to speak about them too much so you've got yokai monsters if I can get in a good night, shouldn't be any glare because I haven't really got any lights on, just a natural light coming in the patio doors. Uh, yeah, so I think most of these are from like the late 60s or so. They are in colour, um, old sort of Japanese, I say kind of, kind of ghost stories. I think yokai, uh, what the um Japanese call not just ghosts but monsters, urban legends, myths, cryptids, all that kind of thing. I think come on to yokai. So I've watched the first one so far, which I did a review of on Letterboxd, is good. Um, the actual mon monsters and ghosts themselves are good, and good um, effects for the time, but the story is a bit just kind of a bunch of peasants living in this little village in a tenement block. Some horrible land barons come, want to knock it all down, sell it, start screwing them over. Seeing that kind of story a lot of times in martial arts films especially, but there's no one to take revenge like in a martial arts film by fighting them so the the monsters come um yeah it's pretty good then you've got a part two and part three also old films and the fourth one i think it's called the great yokai war is uh takashi Miike remake so considering he makes quite insane films usually like itchy the killer and audition apparently it's like his first kind of family film uh yeah so get around to watching all of those so yeah that was reduced from like 45 to like 20 or so children of the corn i like the first one i don't think i've really seen the others but i've not heard great things about them but I do like the box set. This was usually 45 or 50 on the shelf, whereas in the cell, I think this went down to 20 or 25. So I thought I'd pick it up. Also, it was that cheap. Uh, I think I've seen number two or three in the past. So I can't really remember them. Number one is good, but quite aged. I think it's got like Linda Hamilton, uh, play Sarah Connor in Terminator. I will watch them all eventually. But yeah, first one's good. Um, worth having for the sort of price I got it at. This one. Well, these next two I got in CX or Sex, whatever you call it. The American Horror Project. I think these are lesser known uh, sort of independent horror films. Might be more character studies. But yeah, it comes with three of them and the book, all in good condition. Pick that up in CEX. I think it had the price on of 20, but it charged me 15 when it went through the till. And you've got the part two. This one's still got the slip case, although a bit damaged, whereas the others was already missing on part one, but I'll probably take it off anyway. So yeah, this is obviously the part two of it. I think this one's a bit more expensive. Was priced at like 30 or so. But yeah, basically, first one went through the till at 15. This went through at about 18 or 20. So yeah, good price. When I've looked on Amazon and that to get them second hand now that they're out of print and never really seem to have them on the Arrow website or in shops like HMV. They were about 50 each or so. So yeah, quite happy to get those. This one, Shram. I'm not sure if I'll enjoy this, directed by Jorg Buckgrit, that made um, Necromantic and Oster Montag, and what's the name of the other one? I uh, can't remember that at the moment, but it basically just makes quite sort of disturbing, I wouldn't really even say art house, kind of low budget, like independent films. I've heard quite good things about this, there's some quite sort of shocking scenes in that, it's about a serial killer, but yeah, again, this is a limited edition, I think it was usually like 25 on the shelf, I think that was down to about 15 or so, so just picked it up. Obviously, all of these I will watch, and I do want them in the collection. But whilst it, they were cheap, I sort of bolstered the collection. There's a few better films that I say reduced to like nine, whereas I thought better to get the good value, go for like the bigger boxes and the 4Ks and stuff that you get more money of. The Beta Test. 
It's a nice little um, limited edition. I have read the synopsis on this, but I can't say I too much, know too much about it, although I think it's a newer Arrow release. But yeah, again, obviously that one's in the cell. Demons. This one I didn't save massively on. I think it was 25 to do about 18. But yeah, paying 25 or 50 for like the pair of them is just insane. So £18 for it ain't bad. I think I had watched this when I was younger. I couldn't remember it too much. But yeah, enjoyed watching this again. Some of the dubbing ain't great. I might watch it in Italian with English subtitles next time. And you've got Demons 2. Again, reduce from 25 to 18. Don't think this one's better, but a bit more high action happens in an apartment block, which the first one happens in a cinema, theatre, whatever you call it. Sleep. I've been seeing this one there a while for like 19 or so, and limited edition, so like the um, beta test. That's what you see that. It's got like a slip case and art cards and things inside. I think it's got like two discs or so. Yeah, I don't really know much about this. Looks like a foreign. Looks like Swedish or something, but it might be quite creepy in the original, so I'll get round to that. I like any kind of films about dreams, like Paper House, for example, an old British film. I think it's by Bernard Rose, that makes Candyman. Uh, this is a newer one, That Cold Day in the Park, a Robert Altman film. There are quite good things about this, it might be a slow burn. Um, I mean, it says it's kind of like a, not a sexual film, but like a romantic kind of one, whereas it's 15, it can't really be that strong stuff. Uh, that one, I think, was actually full price, to be fair, at about 18, but don't mind paying it so much when they're new, because, you know, if you get a new, like, Hollywood film on standard Blu-ray, you're looking at 15 when it first comes out. Edge of the Axe, this one was only £9. Seen this when it came out, first of all, like, years ago, and I think it did have the slipcase, but again, I didn't want to pay 18 for it then. I'm not a biggest fan of slashers, and I've heard this is one of the better ones, but it's like a Spanish one. Right, so I think that's all the Arrow video. So yeah, it probably cost me like £110-£20 for those, including the ones at CEX. So would have been obviously double that if I didn't get them in the sale. VHS 85. Uh, is this the right? No, I think it might be 89. It's the newer. Oh, I'll go and have a look at the end of this. Uh, so I won't really talk about that yet because I think I've actually picked the wrong one out of the collection. I've got two newer ones. Thanksgiving. Uh, Eli Roth film. You know, I was pleasantly surprised at this. Um well made, good original kind of kills and gore, not over the top or stupidly comedic like some of Eli Roth's films, uh, better character writing than normal, some good satire on Black Friday and Thanksgiving, um, probably hit more if you're American but I did understand some of the jokes in that, um, good sort of twists, could be sort of three or four different people could be the killer, obviously that's not really a spoiler, it's like good red herrings, yeah really surprised how good that was actually. Uh, and this is 88 films, although it's done in the style of, I can't remember the company, but basically they have this kind of like snips, Evil Dead Trap. So yeah, I heard a lot of people had this on their list back in the day for like most extreme uh, films and disturbing and gory. It's quite gory and it's quite sort of mean spirited. And for a low budget film, it's quite entertaining. But yeah, it's not really that like shocking, or at least not today. Uh, part two, Hideki. I don't think it's Follows on from the story, but obviously got the same name. But yeah, not got around to watching that. But again, 88 films. Oh yeah, and both of those are numbered. So we've got 1343 and 1943. I don't know how many out of, probably thousands. Uh, Tokyo Decadence. I think I've seen this one before, like a Titan Asia Extreme. I might have had it on. It's quite a slow sort of burner film. Uh, I guess you could call it a romance, but quite like a sort of S&M. Um, I think there's more to it than just like the sex scenes, but... Um, yeah, these ones I just wanted to collect, sort of, um, what are they called, this series, uh, let's see if it tells you on there, uh, Japan, Japan, Japan Arky, so like, play on Japan and Anarchy, uh, yeah, I haven't rewatched really that one yet, Dogman, really enjoyed this one, a Luc Besson film that makes Fifth Element, and Leon, Leon being one of my favourite films ever, Fifth Element's good. Yeah, it wasn't quite as much like violence and actual dog attacks as I expected, but it's only at 15. But um, yeah, really good. Uh, Caleb Landry Jones plays a really good role, good lead. I don't think he does a singing bit. It's probably like superimposed, but it does work. I uh, won't go with too much of the plot on that because it's sort of best to go in not knowing it. But yeah, I got this one with a part. Well, I had a £20 gift card from one of my friends in work. So put that towards it, which was 15. And then a bit of it towards well one of these other ones basically so i spent a lot chernobyl diaries i think i got this two pound in cx sex i don't know what you would call it but uh yeah it's a found footage one but it's meant to be quite good um been watching a few found footage ones recently that i quite enjoy some of them are terrible but it's at least 10 or so that i think including like wreck and um 
one I'll show in a bit, uh, Borderlands, that are really good films, really well done. A um, lot of found footage is kind of hard to be like, why are you filming this? And why would you keep filming it when you're being attacked? You drop the cam camera and run. Whereas um, sometimes they do make it work to their advantage and sometimes the limitations of found footage and the angles do make it them have to be more um, creative. This one, I'm surprised 88 Films released this, Loch Ness. Seen this when I was a kid. Ted Danson, Jolie Richardson, Ian Holmes. Uh, PG, sort of family film about Loch Ness. Can't remember too much about it, but I know it's good. But yeah, when you look at some of most of the stuff 88 Films are releasing, that's quite an anomaly. Uh, re rewatch that again soon. Yeah, I think that was about 15 or so new. It wasn't in any sale. This one I got in CEX, uh, Snake in the Eagle Shadow. Got this on DVD. One of Jackie Chan's best choreographed and funny kind of films. It's like a comedy, some really bizarre scenes. Uh, yeah, this was in CX, about £8 or so. I had like a slipcase in the booklet and that, so I was quite happy with that. Um, this one I ordered off Amazon quite a while ago, not long after I'd done the last update. I'd probably take that one off. I mean, it's a bit of a stupid little J card, to be fair. But yeah, I was surprised, actually, how good those two are. First one, a bit more of a sort of, I wouldn't say serious, but, you know, B-movie, creature film. And then the second one... Bit more sort of action with people hunting the creature. Some pretty good actors in both of these. I think the second one's got uh what's her name? Let's see if I can find it on the uh orientation on the D Wallace, which is from the Howlin. I think she was in Cujo. Uh yeah, we're pleasantly surprised. I say those two are two of the best sort of creature features from the eighties. I would say outside of Jaws, but Jaws want the eighties. But yeah, better than Anaconda and films like that are. Um yeah, they were like Piranha, probably better than Piranha, but yeah, I was quite sort of surprised how good those two were. And then you've got Possessor, Brandon Cronenberg, Son of David. Um, I probably have heard this to um, what's it, the new one called uh, Infinity Pool. I'm probably better than his first one or first film to my knowledge, which is Antiviral, which I think again had that Caleb Landry Jones had a dog man. But yeah, it's probably his best film. Quite graphic, one kind of quite strong like um, sex kind of scene. Yeah, pretty original concept. I won't go into it because I'm running out of time. And I've got to record on my phone. Green Room with Anton Yelchin. Uh, was it Yedlin? I think it's Yelchin. Let's have a quick check. Uh, let's see it on there. Anton Yelchin, yeah. Then it's got um, Patrick Stewart, apparently in a really good role. It's not really a spoiler, but as like a neo-Nazi, which you can't imagine him in after being in Star Trek. Uh, yeah, not actually watched this yet. I got a normal Blu-ray a little while ago, but yeah, really heard really good things. You see both of those oh, slipcases are coming off a second sight. And then this one, The Borderlands. Another second sight one. This is a British fan footage film. Not only one of, if not the best fan footage I've, films I've seen, but one of the best films I've watched recently. Really creepy when you watch it. It's sort of subtle. It doesn't give you the whole story and spoon feed you. The way it ends is quite haunting. Yeah, I was thinking about the ending for days. Um, not obviously going to spoil it, but not one of those ambiguous ones that just ends and you, leaves you to think of it up. Like, say, Donnie Darko, it has an ending, but it kind of does leave you thinking what happened. Uh, really good acting. Utilised the um, special effects really well. It's kind of, yeah, slow burn, so you don't see too much in it, but it's enough. Uh, it's, yeah, it's more, say, Blair Witch Project when you look back and think of it, other than the fact that it was marketed virally as being uh, sort of real and people went into it that it didn't really have much happening. It was just creepy sort of um, dialogue and then running around in the woods, whereas this does have more payoffs, a few more like horrible scenes, a few jump scares, but not done in the sort of um, generic dump, jump scare. There's one sort of trick kind of comedy jump scare almost. Um, I won't go into the jump scares, but one with a dog is all I'm going to say, kind of get you. Um, yeah, quite funny, good acting. Yeah, really good on the whole. Uh, one of the guys that stars in that is the guy that edited Kill List. You can kind of tell sort of similar. Um, yeah, back to run out of time. So bye, everybody. Thanks.